Well, you can tell the air is good in Illinois. That was the annual open house at the Benton Municipal Airport in Benton, Illinois, and a great bunch of flyers. Now let's head out to Colorado and see what Ed Wilson's doing. Okay. What we're going to do today is we're going to go through the timing of the Rotax engine. This is a point ignition engine uh, indicated by the black coils on the front of the engine. These wires that are coming out of the harness, uh, two of the black wires are for the ignition system. They are indicating the mag or the PTO cylinder. This being the mag and this being the PTO. We have to determine first, you're usually working with a working engine, so by hooking up to these two wires, we'll be able to tell which uh, ignition system we're hooked up to. So you'd want to ID the ignition systems uh, first. Now, we also can get a more distinct reading by removing the wires from the coils that are actually going to the points. If we don't, we're going through the resistance of the coils and we don't see a variation in our light indicator as we would like to see. So we're going to, again, pull these off, isolate them so that they're not grounding. Grounding would be like the points being shut. So we would open those up. The other device that I removed is the dampening box. The dampening box, the red wire, goes with a red tracer. So normally this would be hooked up to here and this to here. We again will remove the dampening box. Now at this point we're going to remove the flywheel just to make it easier to uh, see the workings of the points and we'll go ahead and remove that for you. First thing I want to do is put the fixation tool in the pulse hole of the engine. On the 503 that we're working on today the pulse holes that on the PTO cylinder so I'll rotate the engine through, and then at some point in the crankshaft, the pin will go all the way in. I want to remove the fan belt first, so I can put my fixation tool for pulling the flywheel in place. And during this sequence, I also mark the belt so that I know the rotation of the belt, keeping the belt turning the same direction all the time. Eliminates the extra wear that you may encounter. We put a fixation tool on the flywheel so that we can torque. I'll pull the pin at this point. Go back and uh, reapply the tool. Now if you run these bolts in too far by using um, unapproved bolts, these bolts have a certain length to them. If you screw the bolt in too far into the flywheel, you can damage the components behind. So we'll tighten these down. Well, I'm torquing them up with a wrench. Just a, a small tightening. Now, if you look at the tool, I'm going against the more solid area of the case. If we were to come up against this side in the um, taking, taking the nut off, we could probably damage this little web here. So now we'll take our wrench and take the nut off the flywheel. If you notice, my tool has been ground to clear the edges of the threads. If you don't do that, you can damage the threads and make them to where you can't screw the puller in place. Remove the lock washer. We'll screw the puller into place. Now, a lot of the manuals at this point indicate that there should be a protection cap. We found that the protection cap is too thick to allow the full engagement of the threads. So we work without it 
and then we put a little grease here to keep from galling the end of the crankshaft. So we'll screw the tool all the way in until there's no threads showing. So we screwed the puller all the way down. We just push the bolt in. And this will usually snap and then we'll screw it the rest of the way to pull it off. Now be careful at this point that you don't um, get the flywheel out of alignment when removing it. The magnets again will have a tendency to try to hold it to the engine, but try to pull it out as straight and as smooth as possible. If you don't do that, then the magnets will contact the ends of the coil areas and you'll pull material off of them. The point here will take care of the magneto coil which is for this end of the engine and this magneto here. And the other point will take care of the PTO coil, which is going to here. You can see again that the tracers, the red tracer going here is for this point going to this coil and vice versa for the other one. So in our sequence, uh, the points open, uh, the coils have built up energy and then the points fire the spark plug. So that's basically how our ignition system works. Our condenser absorbs the energy as the points start to open and keeps from burning the points uh, away. So our sequence of adjustment is that we set the gap on this point. We time this cylinder, the magneto cylinder, by moving the stator plate. And then when we time the power takeoff, we have to adjust the gap in this point. So we'll walk you through that sequence with our dial indicator, which gives us the travel of the piston. Now to check our timing, what we want to do is we want to rotate the crankshaft in the normal rotation, which is clockwise, till we get to top dead center. Top dead center is indicated by going to zero on our dial indicator. So we back it off, we go to top dead center, we find top dead center, we zero the gauge, and then we check it again. Now we, to determine when the point has opened, we have to back off, which is counter rotation, until we get to a timing point. On this particular engine, 86 thousandths before top dead center is our actual point where we want the points to open. Now we'll go ahead and hook up our wire to our light. We'll test our light to be sure our light is working. And then we'll go to the wire that we have marked as the magneto end. Okay, with the engine at top dead center, we back off or counterclockwise. We turn the engine over until we see the light brighten. This one is around 86 thousandths, is where the crankshaft is located when the uh, points are starting to open. Again, the points are closed when you see a bright light and open when you see the dim light. So this one again is around 86 thousandths, which is within our tolerance. So now we will move the equipment to the other side and show you the timing on that cylinder. Okay, we've now moved the dial indicator to the power takeoff side. We're going to again set our dial indicator for top dead center. We're going in the rotation of the engine to top dead center. And we'll get to that point. We'll set our dial indicator to zero. And then as we back off counterclockwise, we go to the point where the light brightens again, indicating that the points are Closed. And we find on this one that the timing is somewhere up around 94. We'll go into the adjustments of the ignition system and how to troubleshoot them in the next segment. 
Okay, now that we've gone through the sequence basically of how to check the timing, we're going to go back and make some of the adjustments and uh, check for areas of concern if uh, your ignition timing is not working out for you. So we're back to the magneto in. We're back to the correct wire. We're going to go ahead again and set for top dead center. We're going to back off and we're going to see that this ignition system again is setting at about 86. 86 is your optimum number and uh, is desired for this 503 point ignition engine. So in effect what it has told us is that the point gap has been preset. The stator plate is now locked down and located in its position. So if we were to not be on our mark, we can move the stator plate to adjust that. If we're not getting an indication that the points are opening and closing, then we may have a problem with a wire from these points that are attached to the condenser, the wire running out, running to the coil, a connection or a bad uh, situation here. And then again, we want to be sure during this timing sequence that none of these wires are touching to ground, which will short them out and indicate like a closed point all the time. So be sure that these are isolated. We want to again check our connectors, uh, where they're attached to the condensers, um, and that the point itself is in good condition. The point uh, should be smooth enough that by dragging a quality piece of paper through it, we can actually polish the point and get the luster back to the point. They will get a little bit of grit on them from the normal operation or from oil coming from the seal that is behind. So we want to polish the point and be sure the point is clean. If it ever at any time drags material off of the uh, card, then we probably would need to replace that. That indicates that the, there's pitting involved and if we have pitted points we want to replace them. We would also replace the condensers at the same time. But let's say we again have a good set of points we can polish them clean and uh, get some a service life out of them. So we'll go ahead and uh, say that this particular site is timed properly and we will go to correcting the timing on the power takeoff side. All right, now that we're on the power takeoff again, we're going to dial, check our dial indicator for top dead center, rotating the engine through in a clockwise direction. We'll get a zero again on our dial indicator. Once we're happy with a zero on our dial indicator, We'll again go counterclockwise before top dead center and show the point at which the points are closing. We find out on this one that our points are closing somewhere around the 82 to 83 point, which means that uh, the points are probably again closing uh, prematurely. What we'd have to do is go down and adjust the point a little more open to allow it to get to that 86 that we desire. So if we look at it again, going to top dead center and coming back, we see that we're a little early on our timing, which would take an adjustment to the point. Since we've locked the stator plate down for the magneto end, we want to be sure that we don't disturb that and only adjust the point for the power takeoff end. Now that we've set the points and we feel that we've got the, the 86 thousandths before top dead center, which is our, our prime target, we want to check to see that the gap in the points is at our minimums or our maximums. Now the points are supposed to be gapped at about 15 thousandths. What we do to check that is we have a non-ferrous feeler gauge, which has a 16 and a 14 thousandths uh, feeler on them. We'll only need to use those. We'll put them about 90 degrees to each other and lock them down. We want to clean the material off of the 
oil or anything like that that we're going to drag back into our clean points. Now what we'll do is by bringing the point to the open position, we'll determine what the gap looks like. We slide it in. If it's easy, then the 14 is uh, a little loose. And then if we slide the 16 in and it's a little snug, we have some sort of a reading between 14 and 16. 14 and 16 will be the optimum gap that we want to use for this ignition system. This allows the coils to charge to their maximum value and then when the points collapse that we get maximum spark to the spark plugs. So we want to be sure that um, it, we don't open one set of points a little more than the other and it becomes a balancing act. You have to be sure that you get the gaps essentially about the same. So you may have to again go through this timing procedure for quite a bit until you get that set. Now once the timing is accepted, you can do a little maintenance to the system to be sure that it stays in good condition. One is that you use the cam lube to keep the cam in good condition. If the cam were rough, it would have a tendency to wear the points prematurely. So we want to be sure that the lubrication is applied to the cam so that the points don't wear prematurely. The other thing is again that we've drugged the points clear. We want to be sure the grid is clean from those uh, points. And then we start really tracing the wiring system. We want to be sure that the connections to the condenser are in good shape. Up at the coils, the wires again come up out of the ignition system and the wires have to be applied to the coils again. We usually use a dielectric grease here. Dielectric grease isolates from moisture and any materials that can get in there and cause some corrosion in these connections. So we'll use a dielectric grease and then we'll put the connectors back into place. Once the connectors are into place, uh, we have the coils. The coils also have a ground wire with a connector on them that also has to be maintained. By removing it, you can tell if there's any corrosion on the connectors and dielectric grease is also recommended here. On the plug wires themselves, with age, any of the rubber components, the dielectric grease works as a good uh, insulator against the elements uh, if your engine is left outside or uh, weathered or anything like that. Uh, so di a little bit of dielectric grease on all the components will protect them from UV or um, chemical damage. These wires will also have a tendency at some point in time to possibly break down in uh, insulation. Uh, one of the ways that you can do it is fire the engine up in a dark situation and watch for little arcings. Sometimes you'll see an arc between a component of the engine and a wire which will again impede the performance of the engine. The spark plug cap also is a part that has to be maintained. Uh, it screws on clockwise, has the maintained tight, and you also have a boot that covers up and keeps the moisture out. Another good place for some dielectric uh, grease. Uh, the cap itself, um, these are a Bakelite material and are susceptible to a little bit of damage if they're cracked or broken. And if they crack and break, they will break down and short and not perform properly. So we want to be sure that all of the components are in good condition. In this area, there is a boot and some insulation areas. But again, at a point where we could get a little bit of chafing if the boots weren't in the right location. We want to be sure that the boot is located properly and insulating the wire from the rest of the case. You see the chafe protection that is provided on the engine. You want to be sure that these wires will never chafe through. If we chafe the ignition wire that is going to the kill switch, we will essentially be doing the same thing as shutting the engine off with the kill switch. So the maintenance of the system is, um, is covered now, and we'll go on to the next segment.